Sometimes when it looks like the whole world turned their back on you, you have to be very careful in that moment to check that you are not the one who turned. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Marina here, and as always, I'm excited to welcome you to another video. If it's your first time here, you're welcome, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Um, this past week, it was World Mental Health Day on October the 10th, and I thought it'd be a good time to have this conversation, uh, because it's not a conversation I think we have enough, um, especially as it relates to us as immigrants, as newcomers in Canada and whatever other country it is you're leaving, we don't talk about it enough, how much of um, a strain that that move in itself can put on us mentally. And then when you add the additional layers and the additional loops that um, newcomers to Canada have to go through to integrate into the society, all of that can take a toll on your mental health. And today I just wanted to come and share from my experience some of the coping mechanisms and the strategies that I have adopted to manage my mental st state in Canada. If you don't live in Canada, it does not mean that this video is not for you. This, what the tips that I'm sharing here would also apply to you regardless of where you live. So if this is content you're interested in, hit the subscribe button and definitely keep watching. My first experience with mental health struggles in Canada actually was triggered by the weather. Um, that's a different kind of depression that is called seasonal affective disorder. And for some of you as newcomers, especially to Saskatchewan or the prairies, like so that would be Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, uh, across Canada generally, you may experience this for the first time. The weather can be brutal. Um, with the weather comes reduced hours of sunshine in the day. So it would be dark until like 8 a.m. And sometimes as early as 5 p.m. is dark again. So that reduced hour of sunshine can take a toll on people. And then you will start to um, experience what some people call winter blues. But it is called seasonal affective disorder. It's a form of depression that is triggered by the weather. Um, so that was my first rodeo sort of with struggles mentally and it was the weather the solution that i was given by my able doctor at the time was vitamin d vitamin d became my best friend i was on double the dose of vitamin d for the longest time just to help me manage that and for every opportunity that i had to be outside when the sun was out i took advantage of it uh, and you ask me like what if it's minus 50 and the sun is out are you still going to go out i know people who religiously take walks every day regardless of what the temperature scale is reading so any opportunity to take in some sun take i took advantage of it it was not easy on some days it was tough many times but when i think about the benefits of just having those that exposure to the sun it helped me stay dedicated to that so for some of you you're going to now need to invest in proper winter gear just so that you can be out if you're going to take like a 10 minute walk that you are dressed appropriately to be outside um, for that period of time. Um, winter stuff is not really cheap, but you're better off just doing a one-off purchase as against buying things that are cheap and then midway into the season, you realize that your winter gear is does not prepare you or it's not appropriate for some of the temperatures you will experience. So it's something to plan, to budget, try to do it now. Um, before it gets too crazy because the more winter progresses, I understand that the more expensive some of these things become. Um, so if you haven't already started looking at what to do for winter, appropriate winter clothing, the best time to do it was yesterday. The next best time is right now. So please look at your winter gear, make sure it's appropriate. If you don't already have check out the stores around you, you will definitely find something that works. So that was for, for me, that was the first thing that I did. Made sure that I stayed out in the sun, my winter gear was appropriate, and uh, yeah, that helped. Another thing that I find helps with people and their mental health, because sometimes the causes, like I've talked about the weather as one of the causes, for some other people, it might be life issues, it might be unresolved past trauma, that's the reason for the struggles that you have mentally. Look, there, there are resources available, there are resources that are out there, there are resources that are online that you can get help from. If you're struggles stem from a place of unresolved trauma or past experiences you need to talk to somebody about it you need to talk to somebody because one mistake i used to make was oh especially as a nigerian like we're resilient people who have dealt with really difficult situation with our government with our economy with different things and somehow we find a way to work around it so that resilience it's almost now borderline um 
because we're resilient, we don't ask for help until the things have reached the point of total breakdown or a point of no return. That was one mistake that I made. I waited too long to start to take advantage of the resources around me to talk to people about what my struggles were. Professionals, that, that's what I mean by people, not just random people. Talk to a professional on the help that I needed and getting the appropriate help that was necessary for me. Um, so yes, I understand that you're resilient, but please do not wait until you have reached a point of total breakdown before you seek professional help. So if you have access to like employee family assistance through your employers and you have any form of struggles, take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. If you're a person of faith, it does not make you less a person of faith because you're seeking professional help. When you are sick, you go to the doctor. It's your faith in question when you go to the doctor. Do you feel like, oh, I don't have enough faith. That's why I'm going to the doctor. No, we think about it from I am sick. I'm going to the doctor. Or if you're pregnant, you're going to have a baby. You go to the hospital. You do not question your faith when you trust the doctors and medical professionals to provide to you the help that you need. It should be the same when it comes to your mental health and your mental well-being. If you need professional help, if you need professional resources, if you need to lean on the wisdom of the professional who have been trained to provide you help in this area, you should totally take advantage of it. Um, and for some other people, it might just be temporary life issues that are your stressors. Like I recognize that the economy right now is weird. The job market is weird. The cost of living is sky high. The unemployment rate probably increasing. Uh, people are having a harder time finding jobs or switching jobs or moving up in their careers. All of these things can be stressors. But I want you to understand, especially the newcomers, for those of you who are still waiting for that first big break, you're waiting for that opportunity to get that first job so that you can take care of your families. Your savings is running out. You don't know how you're going to continue to sustain your family because there's no income coming in and all of these bills are sapping your savings. I, can to I totally understand that. I totally hear you. I've been in that position before and I know how it feels. This is where the importance of community comes in. Who's in your network? Who is in your, who's in your corner, basically? What kind of relationships and associations have you built? What relationships can you leverage on in times like that? Everybody's experiencing this in one form or the other. The fact that some people's stressors may look different from yours does not mean that they don't have their stressors. But this is the point where you want to network. This is the point where you want to leverage your um, affiliations, both professional, uh, social, personal, religious, whatever it is, this is not the point where you want to isolate yourself. This is not the point where you want to slog it out on your own. That's the almost toxic re resilience that I was talking about. You do not have to slog it out on your own. If you're surrounded, if you're in a network of people who you feel you can share these burdens with, you totally should do that. Sometimes that outlet is just all you need. Talking it through with somebody else and getting encouragement and hearing how they're doing it. For some of you, you might need to lower your expectations and see how you can find a now job as against keeping your eyes fixed on. It must be the career that I know. It must be at the level that I know. There are still newcomers who are making that mistake. Yes, there are people who are getting those jobs at that level from the first try, but if it's not working for you, maybe time has come for you to reevaluate what you're looking at, reevaluate the kind of jobs you're applying for, reevaluate your resume, and even make sure that you're putting your most competitive self out there because the market is very competitive right now. Don't do these things by yourself. Whatever help it is that you need, reach out, reach out to somebody and ask for the help. You just never know. There's the popular saying that a closed mouth does not get fed. If you sit down inside your house and decide to slug it out yourself, nobody's going to know the kind of help that you need. And sometimes when they know is when they can provide that kind of help. So please don't isolate yourself. Community is important. For me, that was something that kept me going. My community. It was from my community that I got advice on some of the career choices that I took that now set me up on the right career path when I first moved here. It was from leveraging, it was from asking questions, it was from talking to people. Some of just those random simple questions that I asked stopped me from making bad decisions, stopped me from making poor choices that would have led to a different outcome, most likely different from what I'm seeing right now. Some of those poor choices would have set me back a couple of years. But from asking questions and from le leveraging my community and the support around me is how I was able to make better choices and it set my career up on a better path um, than what it would have been if I didn't ask. So please leverage those connections, leverage those relationships, ask the right questions. 
okay? Like I said, I call them temporary life situations when I first started talking about it because that's exactly what it is, temporary. As difficult as it looks right now, it is a temporary phase that will pass. It will get better from here. As bad as it is for you, trust me, somebody has, has it worse. Somebody is making do with less and they're okay. You will be fine. It's a temporary situation um, and treat it like that. Treat it like it's a passing phase just so that you don't make any permanent choices because of a temporary life situation. Another thing that helped me to manage myself mentally when I first got here or in the course of the time that I've been here is that I've been able to identify my triggers. What are the things that happen that set me back mentally? What are the things that happen that now have me operating at a percentage less than 100%? I was able to identify those things and I found a way to manage them. For some of you, it's some of the bad friends you have that are your triggers. Some of the things that they say, some of the things that they joke about that poke you in really sensitive places, you need to start to set those boundaries to say, I don't like this thing. I cannot stand this thing. This is not right. And call it out. For some other people, unfortunately, it's family. For some other people, it's toxic family relationships. It's those relationships that you can't really in a way, walk away from, but you can manage the access. You can manage what you say. You can manage how much information is flowing in that direction if it ends up being a trigger. So identify your triggers and work around them. For me, I realized that one of my triggers was stress. I was taking on so much. I was doing so many things at the same time. Um, I was trying out too many things at the same time, and I was not asking for help. I am a I consider myself a resilient person. At some point, it became toxic res resilience because I would not ask for help even though I was dying, even though I was crumbling under the weight of some of these things that I carried, I would not ask for help because I just felt I would be weak if I asked for help. I would be weak if I leverage on people around me or depend on people around me to do things for me. I was so used to being the one who gave, who other people could depend on, who was available to everybody, but I would not ask for help when I needed people to be available to me. Sometimes it was because the few times that I asked for help, I was disappointed and I just thought, no, I'm not going to do this. But the truth is, it is not everybody around me that has disappointed me when I asked for help. So I should not be using one brush to rub everybody. I had to learn how to step back and prioritize and put things in their actual spot. I cannot have a full day of work. At some point on this channel, you guys know I went back to school. I would have a full day of work, do school work, reply emails from YouTube, want to do everything like my house must be clean, the sink must be without dirty dishes before I go to bed. And then the next day I'll do rinse and repeat. And I sat down and started to ask myself questions like, okay, what can wait? If my sink has dirty plates in it overnight, who's going to die? Or if I don't reply to this email from this person, who is going to faint? Nobody. I had to start to prioritize. And unfortunately, I realized that I had a whole priority list and I was not on my priority list. I had to shift that. So the first thing you guys would have noticed that it started to take me a longer time to respond to emails. I explained it here, but it was one way for me to manage that part, stress, that became a major trigger for me. Stress was my major trigger, so that was the only thing that I really needed to make major adjustments around. I have a solid support system around me, so on the days where I'm bored and I don't want to be by myself, I have people I can call to say, hey, are you up for, let's just go out for a drive, or let's just go for a drink, or let's go somewhere to go and eat something. If you're on this channel, you would have seen my crew many times. I leverage those relationships because those relationships foil me. Those relationships energize me. The days where I'm just looking for like a boost or something to raise my spirit, I have people I can call. I have movies. I have music. Music is such a big thing for me. Music foils me in ways that, oh my God, it's just so refreshing. Um, so yes, that was me. I identified my stressor and I created boundaries around it. One other thing that really helped me was finding my silver lining. Yes, things are not where I want them to be right now, but what is working right now? I don't have the job of my dreams, but what else is working? Am I in good health? Yes, that's the silver lining. Do I have a roof over my head? Yes, that's the silver lining. While these other things, I'm waiting for them to fall in place, I shifted my focus from what was not working and focused on the silver lining, even if it was just one. Even if it was one silver lining for me, that's what I held on to at that time. And I found that it really helped. I heard a saying many years ago that shifted my perspective and the person said, sometimes when it looks like the whole world turned their back on you, 
you have to be very careful in that moment to check that you are not the one who turned. Because what are the odds that the whole world at the same time will turn their backs on you? I know that that's some people's experiences. I'm not minimizing that. I'm just saying that sometimes we have to check that we are not the ones turning our back on everything else, on the help, on the resources, on the community that is around us. When it looks like the whole world has turned their back on you, you have to check to be sure that you are not the one who turned. So every time I'm feeling abandoned, I'm feeling left alone, I'm checking again to say, is that what's really happening? And more than half the time, how it is in my head is not how it happened. So in having those conversations and asking questions, it helped me to stop assuming that nobody had time for me, everybody prioritized everything except me. Having those hard conversations sometimes provided the clarity that I needed. So find your silver lining. Whatever it is that you can hold on to in this period as a source of hope, hold on to it. And then be grateful for the silver lining. I mean, as tough as it sounds, be grateful for the silver lining because it could have been worse. Some people have it worse. Some people are making do with less than where you are. So you have something to be grateful for, especially in this season of Thanksgiving. In the spirit of Thanksgiving, I want you to be able to write out the things that you're grateful for. Find a list, find something to be happy about or to be grateful about every day because the struggles with mental health are not going away. For every level, there's a new devil. That's what we heard. So right now, it's a job that you might be looking for. When that job comes, there will be a new stressor. It might become, oh, I want to buy a house. You will buy that house. When that house is bought, there will be a new stressor. Something is going to be a stressor. Something is going to be a trigger at all times. So you need to find a way to find joy. Find joy, be grateful, uh, practice gratitude, regardless of the triggers that are around you. I just thought I'll come share this with you guys today. I'm talking about mental health and in the spirit of Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving today in Asa the Day you're seeing the video for sure. It's Thanksgiving today in Canada and I want to challenge all of us to find reasons to be grateful. Reach out to other people. In the spirit of Thanksgiving, reach out. Let's keep our communities going because isolation is still a major problem that a lot of newcomers are experiencing and I'm hoping that we can start to bridge those gaps and keep the, those connections going. So... Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you learned from it. I really hope you did. I hope that after this video, you feel a renewed sense of hope and you find one reason at least to be grateful. To my Canadian family, here is wishing you a happy Thanksgiving. May we always have reasons to be grateful. For everybody who's trusting or struggling and waiting for that big break, I hope uh, that that big break comes soon and it will come even bigger than you imagine. Um, thank you again for watching this video. Um, if, you if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button that really helps leave a comment below what are you grateful for if you're in canada what are you grateful for let's let's keep the let's keep the gratitude chain going uh, thank you again and until i come your way in the next one it's your girl as always marina saying thank you and have a very awesome day bye